I'm Ryan McCaffrey from IGN. Welcome to another episode of IGN Unfiltered, my monthly interview series where I sit down with the best, brightest, most interesting minds in the game field. This month, my guest is Stig Osmussen, the game director on Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Bring your lightsabers. It's time to talk some Star Wars. But he's also a game director from the God of War series back on the PS2, PS3 era. Lots to talk about. Enjoy. So Stig, how'd you get started with games? That's always my first question. I always like to know sort of the superhero origin story of, of all these uh, wonderful game creators. So Definitely not a where did superhero start for origin story. <laughs> um, well, I was always a gamer. I loved playing games uh, on different systems. I started on like TRS-80 computer, like nice. space, space Invaders on it. Had an Apple, um, I think Genesis, not Genesis, the Sega Master System was the first like console that I had. Yes. And then I got the Nintendo after that, which at the time just had way more games. It was awesome. Uh, but was, at the same time, I was always into art. Yeah. And um, took all the different classes I could in, in uh, middle school and high school and ended up going to college for architecture and uh, found out really quickly that like architecture really wasn't my thing. Um, so I dropped out. But I kept on playing games. What what turned you off to architecture? Was there like a sort of a specific moment where you had to? Yeah, had there's. To do I something? mean, I, I liked creating structures, but there was these things called math and science <laughs> that, like, you know, my anything that I created was wouldn't practically uh, work on Earth. Yeah, wouldn't adhere to the laws of physics. No, um, unfortunately <laughs> not. But actually, it turns out to be a good thing because I found out that you could do all this cool world building inside video games that you couldn't do in the real world. Yeah. Um, and there used to be this, I don't know if you remember Next Generation Magazine. Oh, sure. Yeah. yeah so I used to get that, and um, they um, advertised this art school in Pittsburgh, and I wasn't doing anything except for playing video games and bartending yeah. at the time. And my parents were like, when are you going to you know, find yourself? And um, Early 20s. Uh, and I ended up uh, going to art school, and, and um, I did really well. I, I really enjoyed uh, 3D animation and 3D modeling. And and uh, ended up getting a job straight out of art school at, at Atari of all places. Well, let's let's back up for a second though, because you, you you just you just you press fast forward real real quick right there. Were you were you sitting around just like drawing game characters and video game stuff and notebooks in school all the time, or what was sort of the the sort of genesis of of uh, extending the, the love of games into and and combining it with art? I think it was more this thing that like it had taken over playing games had taken over such a large part of my life. I had an art background, but I wasn't really doing anything with it. And um, I saw this opportunity to do something. To me, it seemed like, you know, video games might, might as well be being made up on the North Pole. Yeah. By elves or something like yeah. that. It seemed like this magical thing. I just went to the store. I bought one. I got to play it. Um, and I didn't really see that, that there was actually a business behind it mm -hmm. until... I started reading this magazine, and which was a little bit more of kind of like a experts magazine that gave, gave you kind of the inside story sometimes. And when I saw this opportunity that there's like, hey, this school is actually saying that they can teach me the skills to learn how to get into this industry. Yeah, um, that was everything just kind of came together at that point. So that was like sort of the late '90s equivalent of like the full sale ads that we see in in game magazines and stuff now, where yeah. it's like specific kind of game game oriented. Uh, Education. Yeah, yeah, it's it's exactly the same thing. Um, what were some of your favorite games, kids? Because you mentioned you know you had the Master System and then the NES. What what sort of what were some of your your classics from your childhood? Um, I mean, right off the bat, I would say um, Atari classics, things like uh, Centipede, um, Paperboy, Gauntlet was huge for me in the arcade. Yes. Um, Commando, Ikari Warriors. Um, I just loved, I loved Splatterhouse, I loved arcade games. Um, when I, when I like, was playing console games at home, Contra, up, up, up down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, BA, BA. <laughs> I, I was able to beat the game before I got that code. Yeah, that's so impressive. I Contra got, was a tough game. I, I, I believe there was a time when I could beat that game without dying. Um, and, uh, I mean, it, 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 Metal Gear... Um, well, suddenly Jedi Fallen Order makes a lot more sense that you were, you were pushing yourself through the Contra grind early yeah, on. Yeah, Con Contra, um, Castlevania, Metal Gear, um, Zelda, S Metroid, Super Metroid, the, all those games. You ran through all the, all the classics. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Um, so you mentioned kind of, kind of 
wandering aimlessly uh, a bit in a sense after high school before you, you found your way to Pittsburgh and the art school. So what was- It wasn't aimless. I was learning Fair that- Fair enough. <laughs> I was learning that I didn't want to sit behind a bar yeah. all the time and uh, and um, serve, serve people drinks and clean up and be there until two o'clock in the morning. That was really hard work. I yeah. wanted to do something that was going to be more um, uh, thought intensive. What, so what did you originally want to be when you grew up, either as a kid or even a little later before, before art came calling? Um, like I said, I was really interested in architecture. Um, before that, um, I don't know. I, I think that was the thing that the, the first thing that really started speaking to me. I, I, uh, um, I, I'd say that's that's it. So uh, your dad, if I read up correctly, was very much in the sciences. He was sort of on the the sciencey side. Well, you did so, your homework. <laughs> yeah. When uh, your Wikipedia page is is. Fairly thin, but there are a few interesting nuggets there, and uh, you know, dig up what I can. Yeah, I don't know who added this stuff about my dad. It might have been him. <laughs> uh, well, you never know. That's that's the point of Wikipedia, right? Anybody can jump in there. But as somebody who did then go into the arts, when you tell them, "Hey, I want to go to art school in Pittsburgh," are they super supportive at that point? You know, um, I think if I had straight out of high school made that request, I don't think they would have been as, as supportive. But at this point, like, like I said, I was in my early 20s and they yeah. just wanted me to get on with my life. Yeah. And it seemed like something that I was really, like for the first time in a while, I was really driven and like, this is something I want to do. I want to get out of this, this city that I'm living in and I want to go explore another um, you know, place. And uh, they were super supportive of it. I think still to this date, um, my family doesn't, um, you know, really get video games. Even but, now, even after s how many, like, you know, several s crazy successful games, it's still kind of a... a I think they get that there's, like, a whole, um, you know, population of fans across the world that this is something that they're into. But yeah. it's, it's, but, I mean, just like anything else, you really have to uh, commit yourself to it and engage to it to really understand it. But is, as we'll get, we'll talk a lot more about Jedi Fallen Order in a, in a bit, but has, has... Jedi Fallen Order even changed that because it's Star Wars. Right. Well, that's the interesting <laughs> thing is they don't really get Star Wars either. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I think everybody, I, I went to see it with my parents in the late 70s, but that was kind of like, that was it for them yeah. at that point. Because everybody went to see the, right. the, the A New Hope. But um, it's like, it, once again, it's something that, Star Wars is even bigger. It's like the biggest thing, right? Um, and they recognize that there's people that, um, you know, are into it, but that's just nothing that they that that ever struck them. But at the same time, though, they were always supportive to, for the things that I was interested in. So, uh, when you get to art school, you start to f find your calling. You're you're you're, uh, you're kind of finding your purpose. Your purpose, yeah. So, is do you, do you kind of feel that in the moment? Like, man, I'm really into this. This is this is what I want to be doing. Or yeah, kind of just accidentally lead to games afterwards. I think there was the, I'm at art school now and this is the thing that I'm doing. And there's still this dream that's out there that like, and for me it was always, I'm gonna move out to California. Yeah. I'm gonna get a job out, out in California. And it's like, first I wanna like, hopefully get a job in games. If I can't, maybe I can get a job in film or commercials or something like that, doing computer graphics. Um, but it, as I'm at school, I'm just, I've got my headphones on and I'm just into the thing that I'm doing. So. For me, it was always kind of okay. What's the next thing? I mean, what's the next project that I'm working on in school? And like, I had kind of committed myself to something back then that I still do to this day. Is I'm, and that's that. Every time I do something new, I'm going to try to do, do it better than the last thing that I did. Yeah. Um, and if I don't do it, then I'm not going to feel good about myself because I didn't, you know, put my greatest effort into it, and I don't feel like I really learned something at that point. Um, and that's kind of the greatest thing that I learned, I think, from art school it wasn't so much the technical part of it, but this kind of the work um, ethic. The work ethic and kind of this uh, personal accountability and responsibility. So let's now walk me through you, the, uh, the getting to that first game development job after you finished. Because you said you, right, out of, right out of that art school, you, you, you landed a job. Yeah, I mean, it, took, it probably took about six months. I mean, maybe a little bit longer. Yeah, well, I think it was about six months um, of like interviewing at different places, which was another learning experience. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, yeah, I mean, like, it, I'm sorry, where were we going with this? Was, uh, so, did you say, it was, was it Atari? It was, was Atari. It? Yeah, so that's kind of cool because you started playing games as a kid. <laughs> you played Atari as a kid, so that's got to be, that's got to be kind of neat for you, right? Yeah, and the crazy thing is, like, one of my first bosses um, was the guy that, God, all this is kind of crazy. 
Um, first game, really real game I got to work at at Atari was Gauntlet uh, Legends oh, that's arcade perfect. game, which was the re the reboot <laughs> yeah. of the arcade game, which was one of my favorite arcade games of all yes. time. And I didn't even know that going in there because they hired me for a different game. And this is when they, we were still just doing arcade games there. Right. And I was there for like a, maybe a month and they canceled that game and they ended up laying off. This is, this is back when teams had like eight or nine people. Yeah. They laid off half the team, but for some reason they ended up keeping me huh. and putting me over on Gauntlet, which I was just like, well, this is where I wanted to be the whole time. <laughs> um, and so that was the first game, but my boss working on that, um, he had developed um, one of the, my favorite classics, which is Paperboy. I love that game. And the, the game that he made before that was the original Vector Graphics Star Wars game. So here we are. Here we are. Yeah, you've, you've found a way to come full circle on a lot of things, haven't you? Yeah, and, and um, uh, later on I got to work on a game there with um, the person who developed uh, the original Gauntlet and also Asteroids <laughs> and Missile Command. So um, it, was, it was a great place to work with like these these game legends and, and learning the stories of the time like back when Atari was you know the hottest shit. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it was a great. It was it was amazing. I I, I interviewed at I guess at the time places that might have been. In fact, I think I interviewed at EA at the time and they turned me down. <laughs> um, but uh, maybe at the time would be considered more high profile. But for me to go there and, and, and work with all these legends was, was unbelievable. It was a dream come true. And I got to move out to California, too. I always said I was going to be out the in box. California. Yeah. So it was Northern California. I, I, I think it, for me at the time, um, the difference between California was just California. And I didn't realize there was such a big difference between Northern and Southern I think California. a lot of people don't realize. So like they get here and they think, you know, oh, it's going to be warm. Like, no, right. not here. Right, right, <laughs> not exactly. Not Northern California. Uh, Paperboy, man, that... That's another game. That was a pretty tough game. It was too. really hard. Yeah, you seem to be drawn to uh, to a challenge. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot easier when you just got it sitting in the studio and you don't have to keep on feeding it quarters. <laughs> That's but, true. Um, How has that game not been remade? Of like, there's been so many remakes of, of a lot of the classics, but no Paperboy remake. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, Maybe somebody will do it someday. I, I think you it. should get the rights. I think you should take a crack at this if this whole Star Wars thing doesn't pan out. Make the 20-hour uh, the <laughs> Paperboy like, third-person action-adventure game. Where... Of course, what's crazy is there aren't even Paperboys anymore. Right. It's a dead Nobody profession. Nobody even know what it is. It's, you're like, what? <laughs> Don't, you mean you just you just press email to everyone on that subscribed to the mailing list? That's all you got to do? That's the game? Um, all right, so take me to then landing at... Sony in Santa Monica okay. and, and take me to God of War. Okay, so um, yeah, working, I loved it at Atari. It was, it was um, we transitioned from arcade games to working on um, PlayStation 1, uh, uh, Nintendo 64, and uh, PlayStation 2. Yeah. And we, I did a couple games on PlayStation 2. During that time, Atari um, ended up getting bought by Midway. That's right. So I, I actually got to work for Midway too, which was kind of cool. Um, and Midway wasn't, I don't think was making some of the best decisions um, across their entire portfolio. And they had to, um, they ran into some financial, financial issues and ended up shutting our studio down. I remember it was funny that my, my boss told me at one point, he's like, Stig, you're never gonna have to worry about losing your job here unless the studio shuts down. <laughs> and then about a year Just later, the, stu the studio <laughs> shuts down. And I freaked out. Like, I was like, this is my thing. This is my gig. This is like, I had worked so hard to get yeah. this job. And now I have to go through this whole interviewing thing again. And like, last time I did it, it took half a year. And like, you know, everything that I've saved up, you know, uh, financially and everything, I'm going to lose. Um, and uh, yeah, you don't want to move back home at that point. Don't right? want to move back home. Yeah. Um, you know, I just wanted a job, yeah. like, and I wanted one quickly. And I, and I uh, interviewed with a couple. I interviewed with Namco and um, Cryptic Studios. Yeah. And down uh, here in the South Bay, I think, yeah. right? Yeah. And yeah, both of those were down in like kind of Milpitas yeah. area. And um, and I also um, I had a uh, headhunter reach out to me about a. Uh, a Sony job down in, in Santa Monica. And part of me was like, you know, I've been down to LA a couple times since I've um, moved over to, over to California. I like it down there. It's something that I'd, 
I'd like to just, I like the opportunity to, to live in Southern California just to see, you know, the difference. Sure. And I said, yeah, sure. And she kind of talked up this game that they were making, which hadn't been announced yet. And she made it sound like, you know, this is the biggest game Sony's like working on right now. And um, you just got to come down and see it. And I came down and um, checked it out. And at the time, it was called Dark Odyssey. Hmm. Um, and it was about this Greek guy. Um, God of War is a much was, better title. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there's actually some funny stories about that. But um, his name was Dominus at the time, I believe. And I met with a couple people on the team, a couple of the artists. One of them, Ken Feldman, who I, I still work with right now. He's one of the art directors on our Jedi team. Been working with him ever since. Um, and I, I was like, this game's incredible. And it reminded me of, um, you know, games that I had grown up, like Rygar um, and Castlevania. Sure. Um, and and like, and it was beautiful. And I was like, I got to take this job. And they gave me an offer on the spot. Wow. And I had these other ones as well, too. And I bit, then it was basically, um, at the time, convincing my wife, who at the time was my girlfriend, to move down to Southern California with me, which wasn't... That's a, that's a big ask. It is. Um, and, uh, you know, she supported it. And we've since gotten married and had children, so that all worked out well. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it was just this amazing game and, and, and moving down to an amazing studio that, like, at the time had, like, you know, for, I think 30, 25, 30 people on it. Um, and I started... I went there and I started uh, building environments um, for this game, and it was it was the interesting thing too is like when coming from um, Atari and Midway, and even early on God of War, um, environment artists and were also kind of like doing level design as well too. So I ha kind of had you this, learned a lot then. Yeah, like it's so it wasn't like just like you you get put in and, and you're you're just an artist and you're building arts of, yeah. of, of, of these like already designed like shells of, of levels. We were doing the shells as well too. So. Um, I still got to do some of that stuff on God of War as well. Since then, we started um, specializing specializing stuff a little bit more because the games got bigger and bigger. I mean, my first games I was working on I had like ten people on them, and then you know now we're up to like 150. Some teams have like 300, 400, sure. and that's just that's not including outsourcing or any of that stuff. But um, loved it, loved it working on on God of War. It was an amazing game. We were talking about the name at the time. It was called Dark Odyssey. Um, team really liked that for a while. Yeah. Um, Kratos' name was Dominus. Um, and I remember when those two names became what they were that we now know as Kratos and God of War. Is, I think God of War was something that was born out of marketing. I might be wrong about <laughs> that, but it was every, a lot of us in the team were like, what the hell is that? This sounds, <laughs> this sounds like, you know, some. Like, like a strategy game? No, it sounds like some game about just murdering people, <laughs> which. Well, <laughs> but I mean, but it sounded it sounded like too on the nose to a certain extent to people that don't really get the kind of Greek mythology side of things to yeah. it. It sounds like it could just be like some game where you're going in the arcade game where you're going in and kicking ass or something. Um, so it took some of us a little bit like to the, for that to grow on us. And I ultimately I think that was definitely the best decision in terms of the in terms of the name um, Kratos. There's an interesting story is oh. Jaffe. Um, David Jaffe, who was the um, director on God of War, put it out to the team. Hey, anybody got any, any cool ideas for what the name of this character can be? Yeah. And um, everybody would just send emails or whatever. And I think they, those emails went forward on to marketing and they kind of picked who they thought the, the top choices would be. So I put down, you know, Stig Asmussen or, or I put down Stig and I, I like these are the, the names and I put down like five or six different names. And when they came back, they had five names, and Kratos was one of them, but Stig was one of them. <laughs> and, the, and the reason why is because they just saw Stig, and, and then they, they thought just that saw Stig, and they thought that, that was one of them. <laughs> so um, we went with Kratos. I think that was the, the right idea as well, too. Well, maybe if maybe if Corey Bar Barlock's listening, uh, come on, we got we got an opportunity here. It's not too late. I'm sure no one would notice if we just changed the name for next time. Yeah, I think, yeah. Let's give it a shot. Fine. Um, so yeah, the, you mentioned le kind of learning level design, uh, if not sort of deliberately, almost almost sort of by osmosis in your in your early role. That's uh, that's in hindsight, kind of helps lay the groundwork for for your skills as a game director that would come later too. 
Yeah, I think um, working, I, I, especially back in the day, working as environment artists, you got to have your hands on a lot of different things. It's it's just getting a, a level up and running um, requires you to be in lockstep with pretty much every single department, you know, um, because you're, it's it's great percentage of what the player is doing is what how they're contacting with the world. So real quick, before I move on, I, I want to ask you, you know, growing up on all these games that you love, and then you get to work on a lot of them and a lot of those those properties. The first time that you saw your name in the credits of, of a game, how did that, did that just make you feel awesome? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think actually it was the first time I saw my name on the internet that was a bigger deal or um, that I saw it in a magazine. Yeah. Um, but seeing it in the credits, I don't, because since it was an arcade game, and the credits roll all the time. Right. Um, it's, I mean, that was neat, but it's like, oh, you see it the first time, and it's then months later, it's in the arcade, and it's kind of gone away. Whereas mm -hmm. when you work on games nowadays, they're the very last thing that are right. put in the games, and it, and it becomes, and you beat the game, and you see that, and there's a certain amount of accomplishment to that. I will say, though, um, back in the day, Midway Games is all about having like big head modes. In, in games. Oh, I remember. Yeah, everybody remembers. Um, we got to bring those back. Um, but you know, you could do that. We we could. With, we could have you know, big headed Jedi. Just saying. I, I <laughs> we've had some conversations with Lucasfilm about it. And I'm sure they those go well. Actually, I think they. they I, mean, I think they were pretty open to it. All right. Well, we'll look for that in a future update. Um, but uh, it's it was it was on a Gauntlet Dark Legacy. We made uh, back then. You could you put the quarter in, and then you could put in like a little code, and it would remember your player prof profile. Oh, um, yeah. Or it would bring up if you put in a special code, it would bring up a special player profile that couldn't be owned. And if you put in PNK six six six, you got to play as a mohawk, green mohawk version, a big head version of me with a chainsaw. <laughs> and then there was uh, STG three three three. Was um, you could play the? I had a steel baseball bat and like and it was just like more normal <laughs> stig kind of thing yeah but it was like, like when they were doing uh like hiding you know george clinton and nba jam and that kind of stuff yeah it's yeah like totally that kind of thing totally so we had a couple people <laughs> put a couple people on the team we would put that stuff in and um a lot of times like the the producers are wouldn't even know that that stuff was, was in until the game was live you can't our, get away with that stuff anymore right um, is Lucasfilm here right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, like we, 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 we run everything through. Um, I, I mean, people, I, I mean, it's, a, it's an honor system on our game, and I believe everybody told me everything that was in it. <laughs> um, but uh, one thing that was really cool, though, is I think it was on the second date with my wife. We were at this bar in, in, in San Francisco here, a place called the Crow Bar. I don't think it's around anymore. But there used to be this big arcade next to it. And after we left, we we're going back to the car or whatever, I said, hey, let's stop here for a second. And we went up to Gala and I put the thing in and put the code in. And she's like, that's you. Like, that's a that's a nice <laughs> move, man. That's not a lot of guys. That's that is a that's an awesome flex right there. Yeah. <laughs> Where you can just walk up and, hey, let's let's check this game out. You know, we'll see what happens. And there you go. Was she impressed by that or just amused? It's probably just amused. <laughs> um, all right. Got it. So back to God of War. At what what point do you do you move up to art director? Which okay, yeah. Um, so after we finished God of War one, um, man, I think it was it was right when we were in the midst of like we're about to go on what we call comp time, whereas is the company gives you a bunch of like kind of pay time off sure. to make up for all the overtime that you were putting in. Um, right before that, we were basically down to our last bugs. And I was doing like kind of just Firewatch for some of the, some of the art de uh, department, and uh, the executive producer on the project tapped me on the shoulder and said, "Hey, how would you feel?" Or, no, actually, I think she called me up on my phone from her office. And said, how would you feel about being art director in the next game? I'm like, "Yeah, that would be great." And and it was it was kind of a um, career changing phone call for me because I was already thinking about moving from California to, I was really interested in moving back to the Midwest and moving to Madison, Wisconsin, and I was gonna start um, 
interviewing with Raven. Okay. Yeah. But let's see. And what was that? Uh, early two thousands at that point. So yeah. Was that, yeah. It was probably was that interestingly around Jedi Jedi Outcast. It was, it was probably around the same <laughs> right time. Around the same time. Um, yeah. Actually, I didn't even think about that. <laughs> it was probably right before that, um, or right after that. Because and I think after that they ended up working on Wolverine, which is another yeah, it was action super game. good. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I, I, my wife and I were planning on moving out there and just kind of getting out of California. I, I loved God of War and everything like that, but I think. But you'd wanted to go to California. <laughs> I did. I did. But at the same time, though, I missed like, I mean, I think you talked about the weather before. Like, yeah. I like crappy weather. <laughs> and when it's. We only have like one and a half seasons in California, at least in, you know, L.A., San Francisco. <laughs> right, right. And, and, and um. So I ended up, uh, I ended up just taking the job as art director and never looking back. And that's we we started. Um, Corey took over as game director on that, and um, we started um, working on God of War Two, a two year development cycle, which is tough. Um, for, but it was a sequel, so we had a lot of our systems built and everything, and and we weren't doing a, a console. It was the same console, so yeah, it was definitely doable. It was not easy. By any means, it was tough for the team. Did um, was, was that the was that the first sequel you'd ever done? Well, technically, I'd worked on a couple of gauntlets, but they weren't direct sequels. So yeah, but that, but that you like you had done two games in a series. Was that the first time? So yeah, it, so it was. I, I imagine from from a, that's it's got to be interesting from an art perspective because you can probably reuse some stuff, right? Like oh, absolutely. Char you know, character model, all that that kind of thing. Yeah, um, I mean, we did end up redoing Kratos for PlayStation Two. Because we um, learned more about the system and we learned more about, you know, kind of optimizing um, the technology. And we did that with a lot of stuff. I think we were able to, like, basically squeeze out as much power as possible on the PlayStation 2 on that game. Um, but, uh, yeah. Did, uh, did that feel, like, that phone call, did, you, did it feel in the moment like you'd kind of reached a mountaintop in your career? Or was it just sort of... In the moment, do you just kind of feel like, oh, this, all right, this is cool. this is cool. just the next cool thing? Yay, yay. Because <laughs> that's, remember... that's a great moment from where you started of of wandering, you know, uh, of bartending. And then you're know, like, okay, I got to figure figure out what my calling is and making your way to across the country to art school. And now here you are, the art director on a major PlayStation franchise. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 was, I was shocked because I wasn't expecting it. And... Um, but at the same time, though, how do you turn that down? Yeah. How do you turn that, like, to your point, you know, like, it's, it's and it's especially, people were loving God of War. And, um, I mean, it's, I, I, I'm actually, look, looking back at that now, I'm surprised that I was actually considering walking away from that, <laughs> regardless to why, I mean. What would the job have been at Raven? I don't know. You don't know. So you were just talking to them and. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't even know that I, like, that was a long time ago, but that I don't even know that I had even started, like, formal communication with them yet. Mm -hmm. But, um, but I know, I know in my head, I was like, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to get, I want to get kind of back to the, like, the basics of, like, kind of living in the Midwest and that kind of thing and being in, like, a college town. And, like, if I, I've kind of had my run of Los Angeles. Yeah. I guess I, I was wrong. <laughs> it's st still there. Yeah. You're still going. Um, so, and then after you know, two also hugely successful. Uh, which which of the God of Wars is? Do you have a favorite? Are you are you able to pick a favorite? Child? I love them all for different reasons. Um, I mean, I like the first one because uh, it reminds me a little bit of of Jedi um, that we were kind of building the plane while we were flying it at the same time yeah. like we didn't really we didn't really know how it was going to land um other than like when we went to e3 it's like i think there's a lot of validation there that people were like oh, wow this is a really cool game that you guys are working on and um that made us feel good about like the, the final stretch to completing that game um so it was just it was also like i learned so much on that game not only from from a you know technical standpoint of just kind of the craft of being an artist but like also like I was a lead environment artist so I I kind of learned a lot in terms which I had been at Midway before but this was just on a much different scale um I learned a lot about just management and um communicating and leadership 
And uh, so that that was a, a great game for me. Got a war two. There was towards the end of that game, I found myself driving home from night from work every night at like two in the morning and just yelling in the car. I'm like, how the hell did I get myself into this? Like, you know, because we were working so hard yeah. and I didn't I just felt like um, there was like really kind of no outlet that we just had to get it done and, and that there was so much there was such an incredible amount of pressure. But it was my first time being art director. I ended up taking on a level by myself while I was trying to art direct 50 people. And um, which was just compounded things. Sure. And, and, but so I think that maybe that was probably my least favorite to work on just because it was just so mentally demanding. Yeah. But it might be in the long run the mo most rewarding game for me because it ended up kind of giving me kind of like from a um, leadership perspective, kind of the metal. Yeah, it steeled you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it also made me realize I don't want to be, I'm never going to put myself in that situation again. I did, on God of War 3, end up building a level at the very end. <laughs> um, and, but it wasn't as, as it wasn't as, uh, ambitious and it was, uh, the team was bigger then. So I think there was a, there was a little bit more, but God of, God of War 3 was great. It was really rewarding. All those games are just really like a lot of, uh, blood and sweat put into them. Um, a lot of long, long, long hours. Um, but with God of War 3, I ended up, that's when um, my wife gave birth to our children. I have twins, a boy and a girl. And um, that made me kind of like, all right, I can't, I have to kind of change my um, focus a little bit now. Yeah. I can't be here until four in the morning every single night and that type of thing. And and on three, that's what you're humbly not saying. I, I'll say you were the game director. Yes. You become the game director on three. And what I what I want to ask you about, especially in in light of your uh, how you became art director for God of War two, you were you were just given a surprise phone call that you weren't expecting. So it wasn't a thing you were vying for clearly. So with three, what what was the opportunity? Was that a, an opportunity you sought? Like, did you want to take that next step, or did it again kind of kind of fall into your lap through through the hard work? And through opportunity. Yeah, so for three, um, there was, um, Corey had been the game director on God of War 2, and, and for the first part of three, he was continued on as game director. And um, he ended up leaving uh, early, pretty early in development. Um, and it, it kind of happened out of nowhere. And the team was kind of caught off guard, I, th I think, a little bit, like, not caught off guard like we were put in a really bad place right. or anything like that, but it's just kind of like, okay, what? how do we move forward? What do we do? And um, the head of the studio, you know, made an announcement, said we're, we're going to try to see if we can find somebody internally. Um, if anybody's interesting, inter interested, come and talk to me. And, and if you have anybody that you think that that is qualified for it, let me know as well, too. So I, especially after this, this kind of trial on God of War 2 where it was it kind of took me to the very edge um, I was like well I, I I think that I mean I didn't even consider myself um, and I ended up putting it throwing a couple names in the hat and after like maybe a week or something like that after the announcement was made I was brought up to um, studio studio uh, director's office and was asked you know what I thought and I said, well, I, you know, gave the people that I thought would be the best choices. But to be honest with you, I wasn't sure, like, if anybody was, like, um, was ready to do it. Uh, Corey's great. And, like, how do you step into it? Yeah, like, tough shoes, shoes to fill there. And um, he said, well, what about you? And I'm like, I, you know, I really consider that. And he's like, well, a lot of people are saying that you should be um, the replacement. And... It was like it was kind of like that moment where I was asked if I wanted to be art director. I was like, oh wow! And I, and I went home and I talked to my wife about it. And it was, um, I think a lot of it was like, well, if I don't do it, who is? And I don't want to leave. I already like thought about leaving once. <laughs> yeah, that ship sailed. And, and now we're here. Now yeah. we actually own property here. Like right. it's like not going anywhere. It's like we got ourselves in this situation. It's like at least I know if I do it. 
I have a little bit of control over my, and this might sound selfish, but I have a little bit of control over the situation. I know and, exactly what you're talking about. And the fact that people have confidence, had confidence in me and had mentioned me and that like my name kept on coming up made me feel a lot better about it. And she's like, sounds like you gotta do it. <laughs> so um, that's where, where that's we That's great. It. I yeah. love that story. Um, now, after three, you didn't work on Ascension. Um, it's not true. I did work on Ascension. You did work on bit. Ascension. Okay. A so. little tiny bit at the end. Um, but uh, uh, word is that you were working on other stuff. Mm -hmm. that it was, so we're, we're obviously a project that never saw the light of day. I don't know if you can if you, you can talk about it at all. Probably wouldn't be professional for me to talk about it. But Fair it was enough. It was something that um, I was very passionate about. Um, people that I was working with on it were very passionate about. Um, we, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, is, I hope it gets made someday. <laughs> what's, what's it like? I mean, when I'm going to, is it fair to say that this was a canceled project? Yeah. Cause it, it didn't happen. So, um, I, I think when gamers hear that a game has been canceled, you know, first game I ever worked on, by the way, they got canceled. That, and that's exactly what, what I want to ask you about is is um, what's, what is a cancellation like from a developer's perspective? Because, you know, gamers think about it one way, like, you know, we don't want to see people lose their jobs if there are layoffs and, oh, that sounded like it could have been a cool idea. You know, we have the gamer perspective, but as someone who's right there and it was near and dear to you, is it, do you, can you kind of take it in stride or does it, does it take a while for the sting to wear off? Uh, when it happened, I was pretty caught off guard. Um, like when all the good things happened, I was caught off guard. <laughs> um, and immediately, I didn't even care about the game. I cared about the 40, I think it was 42 people that got laid off. That's all I cared about. Yeah. Um, and um, I wasn't one of them either. Uh, and uh, I felt like, you know, I was com complete failure. And... Um, and it was all my fault. Um, and that was a tough project. And the reality is, is I could have, um, I, I could have bailed on it, but I didn't. I mean, there was, there was, I don't, I, I mean, when it actually happened, I didn't really think it was going to, but I, um, it was very, it was a difficult, the last six months were incredibly difficult. Um, and, you, you know, I always said, well, to myself anyways, it's like, look, I'm the director of this. I have a responsibility to the team. And if it's bad right now, if I just up and leave, I can't do that to the team. Yeah. Um, and so I have a responsibility to stay um, because it's, if I leave, it's, go it's definitely going to fail. Um, who knows? Maybe I should have done that. But, uh, and it, it was interesting because during that time is when I started talking to Vince. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, about he was interested in trying some new stuff. And um, I had known him through kind of like the game circle in the Los Angeles area. Sure. And uh, uh, so it was when they did cancel the project, my phone within an hour or two, Vince is calling up. And it's <laughs> like, let's talk. Did, did, uh, do you, do you have anybody that you can talk to when, when something like that happens, a cancellation like that? Uh, you know, is, do you, are there sort of other people in the industry you talk to? Do you talk to your, your wife about that? Do you talk to like a therapist about that? Like, cause I, it just, it sounds like th there's a lot of, there's a, like a big emotional toll, particularly for you're, you're the director on the project. It just yeah. doesn't sound like an easy thing. No, no, I, th I think, um, yeah, of course I've talked to, to my wife a lot about it. Um, talk to my family about it. Um, it was, uh, you know, coworkers, friends of mine that I'd worked with for years. I talked to them. Some of them were affected. A lot of them were affected by it. Um, and yeah, it's just a, just a matter of, of, of getting through it. I think I got to that same point that I got after there was the layoff at Atari where they sh shut the, or Midway, where they shut the studio down. And I went back into that mode. It's like, all right. I need to get a job right away. Yeah. Like I need to, I need to like, I can't like basically dwell on this. I need to, and the other thing too, is I need to keep my, you know, creative um, juices kind of 
going. Yeah. So, all right. So Vince calls. He wastes no time. Uh, when I'm curious, when when he calls, and you end up obviously it leads to you joining Respawn. Was it under the pretense of our were our corporate partners? They weren't owned by EA at the time, but like we've got Star Wars in our back pocket, or 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 did that come later? You know, I think that there was a lot of. This is just from my perspective. Yeah, there was a lot of uh, excitement about the the Star Wars license, the brand, and everything like that. And like, and Vince was very interested in making a Star Wars game. And him and I were having conversations about that. And it's like, you know, Titanfall is about to come out. I think people are going to be pretty excited about this. It might be a good time to start something new at the studio. What would you think about maybe p- pitching, you know? Um, to people at EA, because we're good partners with them. Yeah. Remember, we're an independent company. At the time, yeah. Um, would you be interested in like, you know, taking a shot and seeing if we can get them behind doing a Star Wars game? And I was like, hell yeah. So how's that go? That obviously goes well, but then you've got uh, you've got Lucasfilm to to uh, convince as well. So how did those meetings go? Well, it didn't actually it didn't exactly go that way. It was a little bit more well, first I got to start at Respawn. <laughs> yeah. Um, and okay, here I am. I'm the first person on this new team. Um, and now we got to get something that we can get in front. If we want to really try to see if we can do a Star Wars game, we got to sell that idea to EA first. And I came up with like a, like a one-page pitch or something like that. And we had a couple phone calls. And um, I think there was, there was definitely interest on both sides. But... Um, planets didn't align. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't. It wasn't the right time for both of us. Um, so the plan B always was: if we don't do Star Wars, we're just going to start another team because Vince was really interested in doing third-person action adventure games. Yeah. And, and and I had been talking to him for a while just about you know how cool that would that be to do anyways. Um, so plan B was: let's come up with a bunch of ideas for third-person action adventure games start building our own IP, start building a small team. And we did that. And um, we ended up working on something else for a while. And uh, that ended up over time, um, things changed, the planet started to align with EA, and um, there was now an opportunity to do Star Wars. So we had to take that other thing that we were working on, kind of put it on ice. But I think a lot of the things that we were doing in there were kind of, Breathe the, the 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 initial kind of um, life yeah. into Jedi, you know, like the the um, the very early uh, pieces of code from our motion model to us learning how to use Unreal and all that kind of stuff. There's bits and pieces of that um, in there, and uh, we'll always be be there. Are, are you uh, willing or able to talk about what that what yeah. that other thing was? <laughs> no, I wish I could. How about how about uh, what was the one was the one page? pitch for Star Wars uh, pretty similar to the game we have no, now? No, actually it wasn't. It wasn't. And um, I think once again, uh, there was something, probably a good thing that we went through this, that we took the path that we did because I found my, I probably, if they wanted to do that, I probably would have um, not been able to execute it on as well as, as, as we were able to execute on Fallen Order. So, uh, you know, you're you're so now let's you're you're moving forward on Jedi Fallen Order. You've the team's building, team's going. Yeah, we haven't gotten to the Lucasfilm part yet. Oh, all me. right. Well, let's uh, before we get to that. Uh, is there? Do you feel any extra pressure during the development of Jedi Fallen Order? Because, you know, whether it's fair or not, EA has this reputation for man. These guys never make, and they never follow through with single player narrative driven games. And here you are making one under the EA banner. Um, do, do you feel any kind of personal or team pressure to be like, man, we got to deliver on this to to actually show everybody that, yeah, this this is this can totally be done. We never had those conversations internally. Um, I think that there's a lot of noise. Like after we announced and people knew what the game was and everything like that, that we had to stay focused. But like that wasn't stuff that we were gonna let kind of distract us because we kind of knew exactly we had a very clear vision of what the game was and what we were making so um um yeah 
Was there ever any, because uh, I find it interesting that that Respawn and uh, Jedi Fallen Order and, and Apex Legends and before it Titanfall are, are uh, three of the only, the only real major properties in the portfolio of EA uh, that that don't run on Frostbite. You know, the company's sort of internal tech and yeah. you know, a lot's been written and said about that. Was, did EA ever say anything to you guys about, hey, maybe you should use Frostbite? There was never a conversation. Never a conversation. There was, and keep in mind with my team, we, this predates, we predate, the same with the, the Titanfall slash Apex team, it all predates the um, purchasing acquisition. Yeah. Um, and even before we made our first hire on our team, I was already messing around with Unreal. Just when I was, when it was just the, I was the only person on the team. Yeah. Because it's, it was like, is it going to be Unreal or is it going to be Unity? Because those were the only options at the time. And, you know, out of the box, I was just, you know, I was really impressed with Unreal. And, um, you know, we, they were very, you know, open to communication, having conversations and everything like that. I've heard the tools are really good. Yeah. And the, the support's very good yes. with Unreal. Yes. And it's pretty flexible, too, isn't it? I mean, we've seen it power a lot of different styles of game. Yes. Um, I, I mean, I, I can speak to the game that we're, in terms of flexibility, I can sure. speak to the game that we're making, and it allowed us to um, empower the designers to do things that oftentimes you'd, you'd have to be, like, a senior engineer to do. Yeah. Um, it's through visual scripting, we were able to get some rapidly pro prototypes, some pretty complex uh, gameplay mechanics that, you know, down the road, a lot of that had to be um, um, rewritten and optimized and streamlined because we were kind of doing it in a, a quick and dirty way. But there's nothing like being, a lot of times the hardest thing is find, it's not a lot of times, it's every time. It's like finding out what the design is and finding out what the fun is. And the less barriers to that, Yeah. Um, I don't care if it's like, it's kind of janking and it's, and, it's, and it's broken, but if you can project the way it's gonna go, then we can hand that off to a coder and they can make it into a very elegant system. So now take me back into the room with Lucasfilm. You've got, okay. you've got your idea, you've got uh, EA on board. How's, how's it go when you're, when you're trying to pitch a Star Wars game? So, um, it was it was a long time coming because we had internally agreed with the Electronic Arts to work on another to work on a Star Wars game uh, months before I actually got the date to meet with Lucasfilm. <laughs> so I had no I had really nobody to talk to in terms of I actually I think I talked to Amy a little a couple of times um, when she was at Visceral, but I didn't have anybody like any context of like how. What is this process like? How does it, um, how does it flow? Um, and what are kind of the, the expectations in terms of like um, what we're allowed to do? Yeah. So we had several months before that. So we did a lot of research, we played a lot of old games, Star Wars games that we had played in the past, but we tried to like get a little bit of a refresher on it. Like what? What are some of your we, go-tos? We, we, we played uh, the Jedi Outcast, Jedi Knight. Um, we played Knights of the Old Republic. Um, uh, uh, Unleashed and Force Unleashed, Unleashed yeah. Um, What's your favorite Star Wars game ever besides the one Kotar. you just made? Kotor One. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, that's that's without a doubt. I I actually I really like the game on the Super Nintendo though too. Um, at the, the side oh, scroll. Super Star Wars. Yeah, yeah. Um, X Wing versus Tie Fighter was really good too. So good. And Star Wars Arcade, Arcade was really good, but. Uh, so we did a lot of research. Then we also tried to like reboot ourselves as a team a little bit, like um, just because we're working on something different than we've been working on for the last several months, year, doesn't mean we should try to repackage what we were doing. Because in order to do the respect that Star Wars deserved, we should really kind of do a, a thoughtful kind of like refresh and brainstorm to figure out should we make a different type of game? So did you kind of start over? Is that what you're saying? We didn't start over. We just reset the conversation and in a very healthy way. Like we started talking about making a game about flying spaceships around and, and like or a shooter or something like yeah. that. And we ended up going back to something that we were kind of built for. Like well, you action, are. Action melee combat. <laughs> but like that's, that's kind of like what I do and what yeah. my team does. Yeah. And um, so we ended up going back to something like that that had... A lot of the principles 
um, that are in the game right now in terms of like Metroidvania as a big inspiration and, uh, you know, kind of this, this idea of this, this growing hero um, that, you know, you start small, David versus Goliath, you, you become something much more wise and experienced and powerful. Um, and we got a lot of that on paper. And I think I, I once again, we did a one pager for this. Um, I mean, some things actually that survived out of that one page was BD1. The actual name BD1 yeah. survived. Um, and uh, so, it's, yeah, for, for several months, we're working in a vacuum. Now it's time to come out to, uh, to meet Lucasfilm at the Presidio up here in San, San Francisco. Yeah. And I get here, we had kind of like an idea of framework of what we wanted to do. And um, it ended up becoming, I, I was just the only representative from Respawn. I went in a room and there was probably about 12 to 15 people there from Lucasfilm. That's so intimidating. I'm sitting at one end of the table and there's all these people around me. And um, I, I think we kind of had expectations of what we wanted to do more in terms of like, not exactly these are, this is exactly where we want to go and where we want it to take place and where we want um, the, um, you know, the characters to grow and the abilities you're going to have and all those types of things. But we knew the spirit of the type of game that we wanted to make. So it was really just a conversation. And okay. it was like, hey, what do you want to do? And we're like, well, this is what our background is. This is what we feel like we're going to be good at. Um, and it's like, we want to make a game with, with Jedi and lightsabers and force powers. And I could feel that the room, at the, at the, the room kind of gasped for a moment. And um, I mean, that's when I realized like Jedi are really big. I mean, of course they're a big deal, but it's a really big deal. Like it's like the Holy Grail here. Yeah. And um, there was a little bit of kind of, people eyeballing each other and somebody, I don't remember who on the Lucasfilm side said, what about, what about making a game with blasters? You know, something with, um, it's something more like a shooter. Yeah, like, like dark forces. Yeah. I mean, they, they didn't mention any games in particular. And I, and I said, you know, I think part of my background is, is like melee and the team that we built is melee action. And I'm like, I, I think you wouldn't be really happy with the results of what we'd make for that because I'm not super comfortable with doing that. Right. And I, I said, but, you know, lightsabers. And they, they talked a little bit more about it, and we went back and forth, and they said, here's the deal. We can pursue doing something with lightsabers and force powers, but we can't, we can't talk about Jedi. It's got it, we got it, we've got to refer to them as force users. Okay. And I'm like, all right. As long as we've got lightsabers and force powers, I'm cool. <laughs> um, but it's, it's crazy because it's, it, it, that's the day that I learned. It's like every step of the way, we have to earn it. We can't just come in and say, this is the game that we're making. It's got to be a conversation. It's got to be a collaboration. And we have to earn the respect. Um, and that works both ways. But uh, here we are several years later, and the name of the game is Jedi <laughs> did, Fallen uh, Order. Yeah, did, so did the... <laughs> Did like the Order sixty six? Did, did that sort of era, the time period stuff, come later, or that didn't come out of that conversation? We talked about different time periods in that conversation. Order sixty six did not come out of that. We walked away. I think I had a time period that I was interested in doing, and there were for several different reasons it wasn't a good idea. Um, and we walked away, and my job was to basically answer a bunch of questions based off of like. Hey, these are the next steps is we need to answer some questions and resubmit. And uh, one of them was time period. And I had in the back of my head, we can do Order 66. Order 66 will definitely work. It, but at the time, um, it, we, I don't believe we had that conversation in the room. But I think they were thinking the same thing. I think Lucasfilm was thinking the exact same thing. Because when I came back, I remember it was just like, yep, it totally, totally works, totally makes sense. Um, you know, remember I said, you know, it was important to us to have this character that's kind of growing from nothing to, you know, something. Um, and that just turned out to be such a great time period to do that. Was, uh, was there ever any thought to, to doing dark side powers, getting some, you know, force lightning? Yeah, or... I mean, we've had a lot, we had a lot of different <laughs> conversations and like in terms of like conversations and then actually doing um, are completely different things. But like, we had conversations, not, not about a character, not about Cal doing them, but the idea, I mean, that's what's fun. There's nothing better than going 
to Lucasfilm or Respawn and just sitting in a room with people and talking about Star Wars all day. I'm like, wouldn't it be cool do, if we did this? Wouldn't it be cool if we could do that? And then just finally arriving at where you get. So, uh, did you have any trouble convincing Lucas that you were kind of making a Dark Souls game that was not going to be the, the easy? It was, the it, game's no walk in the park. Um, and this is a game that's going to appeal to a very, very mass audience. Um, I don't know that, like, I mean, we're a lot of different games, I think. True. And I think that was what, you know, th there are bits and pieces here that we're, maybe we're inspired by one game or another. But, like, um, I think the thing that we all got aligned on is, like, this isn't going to be, the experience isn't going to be what most people are going to expect from a Star Wars yes. game. Yes. And there's this idea of like kind of the the magic of Star Wars that like almost anything can happen and um, expect the unexpected and just embracing this idea of Star Wars weird. <laughs> and um, <laughs> that's something once we kind of got around that, it's like, yeah, but all these pieces are kind of cool together. It was more kind of like, yeah, we could nod to things that we understand them because it's like, hey, it's like this thing that we saw before. It's like this other thing, but let's figure... Then it just becomes the problem. The problem becomes how do we contextualize and and going back to the whole thing of earning it. Yeah. How do we get it to earn to be to, the right essentially to be in a Star Wars game? Yeah, I mean that's one of my favorite things about Jedi Fallen Order is that it is it is like this amazing puzzle that that fits together. You know, bits of Metroidvania and bits of Star Jedi Knight and bits of Dark Souls and and it's it like it just it all works together super, super well. And it's like, that's, I don't know how you guys pulled that off, but it's- I don't it's either. It's impressive. <laughs> um, did you audition a lot of actors before finding Cameron Monaghan for, uh, for Cal? Yeah, we said, we went through several different sessions. Um, I, I, I remember I wasn't really happy with, with just in general, just the performances that we were getting. We had some people that had really kind of cool charisma and cool looks and everything like that, but like, there wasn't, nobody was really nailing the performance because we we wanted somebody that was we, very weary, um, very sincere, but also had this this certain amount of optimism behind all of that. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you're, do, when you're casting and you're doing sides, it really takes somebody to be able to read through those and pull out, like, um, something from inside them. And... Uh, we were I, we were getting a little frustrated because um, we it was looking like we we're going to have to do another session, and we, no, we were going to have to do another session. And then our narrative lead, uh, Aaron Contreras, started digging into some of the old folders of like because we had folders that were like um, uh, view first, casting director recommends you look at sure. these, and we're super busy and we're not we're, we're, there's there there could be dozens of people that didn't make the cut for that in a casting session. And he just one night started digging through them, and there was Cam. And I, as soon as he brought it up, I was like, well, I knew who he was. I was like, how is he not in the View First folder? Because he just had this charm, and he had this, this thing. Like, I, I mean, I could tell right then, I think all of us could. It's like, he's going he's gonna to take what's on paper right now, and he's gonna like lift those words off of it and he's gonna internalize it and he's gonna do something even better with it. He's gonna evolve it into something that we didn't even expect. And that's exactly what he did. How about Deborah Wilson though? She's incredible in this. Well, we'd game. already seen her in games yeah. and um, I think that we knew, she was kind of, I don't know, as soon as I saw her, I'm just like, that's that's <laughs> it. And she was in one of the, the first, first review folders and I'm like, and I actually, I believe we were talking about Deb, um, like, right off the bat because she'd had a history with our casting director. Uh, so let me, a couple more questions I'll let you go. You're not here for your health. You're promoting, of course, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, yeah. which is out now for all uh, PC, PS4, Xbox One. Um, what to you has been the best part of working with Star Wars? Man, there's so many of them, uh, or so many different things. It's, it's, it's hard to really pinpoint anything down. I think... Um, the thing that I find the most rewarding, and I kind of knew this going in, but once it really happens and you get, you've got the game done and you see it, um, then it really s hits home is just the, just the wide band that it 
if, if you're making Star Wars and people are watching it, they get their hands on it and they love it, um, you can just hit, hit so many people. And like, that's, that's what, everything that we do is all about. I always go back and say, it's like, we can't take what we do for granted. We've got an opportunity to put a smile on people's face. We've got an opportunity to make pe people cry. And um, that's, this is the largest audience. And I see it now that the game's out there and I see the reaction from the fans um, and I see it in my kids. And I hear it from other people that are, you know, over, you know, I don't want to say senior citizens, but like older people, and 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 uh, it's it's just it runs the gamut. It's amazing. Are uh, now are your are your kids rock stars in school? Because everybody at school is talking about Jedi Fallen Order, and it's like, hey, my dad made that. Um, I don't. Come on. I know. I don't know. I actually, I, I, I don't. I don't know. I, I, I think that the my kids, the, the, my kids are probably pretty humble, and maybe they don't say anything. I don't know. But if they do, and like, <laughs> it'd be pretty cool. I mean, I don't know. I think I would want to brag that my dad made made the, the game my friends are all playing. That'd be that'd be pretty sweet. <laughs> well, um, all right. You're gonna keep working on Star Wars. What's the plan? You want to stick with this thing? Well, we're committed right now to, like, this game. And um, whatever it takes, you know, in the next several weeks, like we're having conversations like we are right now. Um, and we're ex excited to getting more people's hands on it. Um, but that's kind of where we're at right now. We don't really have anything that we can speak about today. Well, uh, the game's fantastic. Everybody here at IGN loves it. I love it. I got to finish uh, the last hour or so of the game. That I could, I'm, that, oh, that, these boss fights are, are no joke in this video game. It's that's why we stuff. call them boss fights. <laughs> that's right. Uh, Stig, thank you so much. Thanks for Appreciate having me. It's, it's awesome uh, to represent the team. Hi, everybody. Great work. Thanks, Stig, and I hope you guys out there enjoyed that interview. For more interviews like that, check out more of IGN Unfiltered. New episodes drop every month. You can find them on YouTube, on IGN, or on your favorite podcast service.